Grand Theft Auto has been a series that has yielded a ton of times you just go, what? Wow. Did that just happen? And I think we're going to talk about a few of those. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, seven mind-blowing moments in Grand Theft Auto games. Starting off at number seven, it's the fly to Liberty City in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Sometimes all it takes is four little words to blow people's minds. This moment comes from the mission St. Mark's Bistro. In it, Salvatore Leone asks Carl to take out his rival, Marco Forelli. Uh, looking back to playing the game back in the day, I'm not sure what I expected, but I know that I didn't expect what actually happened. Like, you literally drive to the airport, get on a plane, and that's when your next objective pops up. Fly to Liberty City. <laughs> It is a crazy message to get in an open world game because you never go to another place in these things. You got a map and that's it. That's how an open world game works, right? But now the game gets you into a jet and gets you flying. So you just start flying and flying and flying until you are off the map. And then the game transitions to an entirely new environment. It's outside St. Mark's Bistro from Grand Theft Auto 3, but it's all covered in snow. From here, you get into a shootout inside the restaurant and eventually take out Forelli. And when it's all over, you're back in the plane and you manually fly back to Las Venturas. Open world games just didn't do stuff like this back then. In fact, not a lot of them do it now. Assassin's Creed Valhalla kind of comes to mind, but it's not even kind of the same thing because while it transports you to different environments, it doesn't transport you to a different environment in the game's world that you've already been to and have a certain nostalgia for. And wow, it was mind-blowing. And number six is Michelle is a government agent from Grand Theft Auto 4. The first girlfriend you get in GTA 4 is Michelle, who comes off pretty normal. She comes on a little strong when you first meet, but uh, mm, I've had that happen. Seriously, like I, I think most people have had somebody come on a little strong in their lives. Uh, for most people, it's not something you really think about too much. Like, yeah, some of her behavior is a little suspicious, but I wasn't really paying attention. So if you're like me, her revelation during the mission, The Snowstorm, hit you like a slap in the face. She's actually watching you for Bernard, the government agent that works for the United Liberty Paper Office. That's why she seems so curious about what you're doing and who you're talking to. It wasn't just nosy girlfriend behavior. It was that she was a spy who was spying on you and keeping track of what you were doing. For whatever reason, it, it's never made explicitly clear, but that's kind of what makes the whole thing so surprising. Once she reveals she's been sent to watch you, she's pretty much never seen again, leaving players to kind of wonder what the hell just happened. My thinking is, mission accomplished, she disappeared. But there's other implications that could be taken from it, like for instance, she could feel guilty. Who knows? It does feel like a bit of a thread they could have tied up later, but to be fair, a lot does happen in Grand Theft Auto 4, so I don't blame them for just kind of being like, yeah, it's a government agent who tricks you. That's that. It's, a, it's fine. It works. Ah. Uh. Whoop-de-doo. <laughs> and number five is Lance's Betrayal from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. GTA games always full of betrayals, of course, but some are a little more shocking than others. This one's definitely surprising. Lance seems like your best pal for most of the game, but in the last mission, called Keep Your Friends Close, he betrays Tommy out of nowhere, and you're forced to kill him. Going back through the game, Rockstar does plant the seeds warning you about Lance's possible betrayal, but it's easy to forget how bitter he slowly becomes over the course of the game after his introduction at the start. The prequel, Vice City Stories, also elaborates his character a lot more to show you that while he seems like a smooth criminal in Vice City, he's actually kind of a screw up. One of the better examples of Lance's potential betrayal is in the mission Bar Brawl, where he tells Tommy there's a place that refuses to pay them protection money, and Tommy yells at him for not doing anything about it. It's subtle, but the cutscene shows how Lance is getting lazier and more entitled after having Tommy take out Diaz. It also shows that Tommy reacts with frustration, and uh, people don't love that, especially if they're starting to feel entitled. Somebody, you know, chides them for something. They're like, what, who are you? Who are you to tell me that? For a lot of players, the moment kind of seems like it comes out of nowhere, uh, but it's one of a few hints that Lance betrays you. It's just hard to notice the first time through. No, I sold you out, Tommy. And number four is the jetpack from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. 
Back when we were all first playing San Andreas, I don't think that anybody expected that we'd be infiltrating an analog for Area 51. Uh, the game starts as a relatively grounded crime drama and ramps up slowly over the course of its runtime. And it's the desert missions where this game just goes off the deep end. Honestly, the mission called Black Project probably wouldn't be enough to list all by itself, if not for the mind-blowing conclusion. The point of the mission is that you're sneaking in Area 51 to steal a secret government project. You just don't know what it is, you just know that Truth wants it. So I, like a lot of people, assumed it was gonna be some random object, or like a weapon, or, you know, like a material, just something you had to walk out of and get away with. Uh, was not expecting a full-blown jetpack, was not expecting to escape through a silo. Playing the game the first time, the whole thing is just insane. Because at this point, you really think you've seen it all. I mean, the game is absolutely stuffed with cars, boats, planes, and everything in between. And you're kind of thinking, well, you know, Saints Row carved out a certain amount of territory for itself. And they're not going to take beyond their normal stuff. Oh, but, uh, uh, jetpack. Good jetpack on top of everything. And it's nuts. If you already know to expect the jetpack, the impact of it is maybe a little less, but for those of us who played the game when it first came out, it was just a crazy, amazing moment, and a game that was literally filled with crazy, amazing moments. And number three is Museum Piece from Grand Theft Auto 4. One of those missions that's more mind-blowing in hindsight, because while it's good in GTA 4, its significance doesn't come into focus until much later. It's an important mission in the story of GTA 4, because this is the one where Nico and Johnny attempt to sell some diamonds, but the whole thing goes sideways after a third character blows the deal. At the time, it seems like just another thing that happens in the game. The only clue that there's something unique is that you get the impossible Trinity achievement for beating it. For a lot of players, the achievements their first clue that the world of GTA 4 is actually a lot bigger than we think. At the time, Rockstar hadn't announced the stories from Liberty City stuff, so it seemed like the third guy who attacked the meat was just a weird non sequitur that wouldn't pay off. Rockstar was playing the long game, though. The guy who attacked the meeting was Lewis, the player character from the Ballad of Gay Tony, while Johnny was the main guy you play as the Lost of the Damned in. Like, before you even knew who they were, Rockstar had already hidden both protagonists from the DLC in the game, and sure enough, when you play the DLC, you see the same events play out from that character's perspective. It's the kind of multi-character storytelling they'd go on to expand in Grand Theft Auto V, but what was so mind-blowing was just how unexpected and deeply integrated the DLC characters were into the story of the game, well before anybody had any idea who these guys were, especially Lewis. And number two is the diamonds in the opening cutscene in Grand Theft Auto 4. One of the more mind-blowing elements of Grand Theft Auto 4 is how the diamond plot weaves through the entire story. Nico doesn't actually do anything related to the diamonds until the mission taking in the trash, where Nico collects diamonds hidden in the trash cans. That's where it technically starts in GTA 4, but there was actually a whole story involving these things going on in Liberty City Stories DLC. The diamonds were put in the trash cans in the mission Diamonds in the Rough in Lost in the Damned, and the diamonds were originally bought during the Ballad of Gay Tony. The Diamond storyline basically ends up being a big shaggy dog story. Everyone who tries to get them ends up dead, and eventually they're found by a hobo on the street at the very end of the game. But there was one little mind-blowing detail I never actually noticed until recently. During the opening cutscene of the game, for a second, you can see the cook on the ship where the game starts is hiding a diamond in the cake batter. So it goes full circle and was totally planned out to be the central story of Grand Theft Auto 4 from the beginning. The diamonds appear at the chronologically last mission in the game in Gay Tony, and they appear at the very start in the opening cutscene of Grand Theft Auto 4. It's a crazy piece of attention to detail that crosses over between what is technically multiple games. Uh, it's a little detail, it's easy to overlook, but it ties all the events of the GTA 4 stories together. And finally, at number one, Smoke and Rider's betrayal from San Andreas. Like, there's no bigger betrayal in Grand Theft Auto, the entire series, than this one. Basically, the entire Green Saber mission, it's pretty mind-blowing, but it starts where it seems like everything's working out pretty well for you. The Grove Street families are working together again. Sweet is good with you. He's planning on taking on the Ballas gang. Like, at this point, it kind of seems like if this were a shorter game with less content, you would be nearing the end of the narrative. 
stuff is going well, you're taking over. Thankfully, Rockstar wanted to tell a more intricate story because this was masterful storytelling with just like huge impact. On your way to meeting under the Mulholland intersection, the mission just changes completely. You get this call from Caesar who reveals that Big Smoke and Ryder have been meeting with Tenpenny in secret. The mission name comes from the green saber that Polanski drives, the same car that was driven by the people that killed Carl's mom. Sweet's meeting is an ambush and both brothers are taken into custody, leaving Smoke and Ryder as the new kings of Los Santos. It's a pretty shocking reveal, especially with Big Smoke, who seems like your buddy the entire time. But unlike Vance, I kind of think his betrayal is pretty well set up. It's pretty well established that he's not happy with his lot in life and he wants more. And another tip off is the fact that he's the only member of the main four who doesn't actually live on Grove Street. Maybe the most mind-blowing thing about Smoke's betrayal is its relation to his famous fast food order. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. There's speculation the order was intentionally drawn out in order to give the Balas more time to ambush them. It's just a theory, but it's one of many moments where if you go back to the start of the game after Smoke's betrayal is revealed, it kind of feels like there's foreshadowing here. Obviously, now everybody knows that Big Smoke betrays you, but back when the game came out, this was a huge surprise and really felt like, wow, they're going for it in terms of the story here. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.